Dr. Lane, um, you know, as, uh, as I've mentioned before, that I am from the USSR. I was born in Moldova, and now with the, this um, Ukrainian war, um, I would say uh, Russian-Ukrainian war, there, we see a lot of suffering. We see a lot of people who, you know, they're just going about their day and they're getting bombed. And it's a really difficult subject, especially because I would say a big uh, majority of my friends are actually uh, Ukrainians. Now, of course, I have some, some friends that are Russians, but uh, I would say a lot of my friends are Ukrainians. Um, so help me understand from your perspective, where is God um, in suffering, right? Does mm -hmm. God ordain that? Um, you know, uh, we've mentioned free will. What's the role of people who's making free choices? I think you've touched on it a little bit earlier. Um, but in this time, I don't know how long this war is going to go on, but my guess is probably we're going to see even more atrocious things happen. Uh, how do we have hope in the midst of, of, of this you know, war and suffering? And uh, how does God respond to a world that is hurting? Um, mm -hmm. We know that he's saying his son, Jesus, but what would you say, where is that, you know, um, the, the, the line between, okay, people's free choices and when, when does God mm -hmm. say, okay, enough is enough? Because um, I don't know how to make sense of this. Like I've been yeah. trying to process it. Last Friday, I literally was so overwhelmed that I just sat at my desk and just cried. <laughs> And I had to turn off all the news because I'm like, I, I don't know if I can take any more of the news coming in. Yeah. Well, um, you know, this this gets into the pastoral versus the theological, um, mm -hmm. because as a theologian, oftentimes we'll dive into these questions of theodicy, the questions of evil and suffering and speculate as to this or that or what God's doing here or why he's doing this and give a very theological or even logical philosophical explanation to how these things work. And there's a time and place for that. And then there's also a time for a pastor's heart um, where you don't have to theologize people in their pain and, and try to give uh, all the right philosophical answers as to why this or why that. And so in each, in each of those circumstances and situations, there is a time and a season for all things, as the scripture teaches us, there might be a time to talk about you know, uh, how we theologize and philosophize pain and suffering. And then there's also a time to comfort those who are suffering and to, uh, to remind people, as I think both Calvinist, Arminians and provisionists, all of us can do is that God is in heavens and he is sovereign. Um, he, he, he is able to redeem all things for his good and for his glory. Um, and that may be where the distinction is in some of our theodicy or the way we would handle these things is that where I would differ with my Calvinist friends is that ultimately God is bringing about these evil things and also redeeming these, the very evil things that he decreed, determined to bring about. And to me, that doesn't seem like a biblical concept. I think a better biblical concept is that we bring about the evil things. Uh, humanity, uh, creation brings about the evil things. Pride and lust are not from the Father, First John 2.16 says. Um, they're from the world. And so this pride, I mean, that's, that's, that's what we're seeing from Putin. It's pride. Yeah, he, yeah. It's lust for power. It's pride and lust. That's not from the Father. That's from the world. First, first John 2, 16. So I don't have to think, why is God doing this? Because I don't believe God's doing it. I think Putin's doing it. I think creation's doing mm -hmm. it. I think demonic forces and Satan's at work. I, I don't think God's doing it. I think God still sits on his throne and he's ruler and a man will not reap what he man will reap what he sows. God will not be mocked. I believe all will be brought to justice. In other words, God is the redeemer. Now, the big question for me is why not now? I mean, why not just smite the guy now? Just like you might say, yeah, why not just yeah. kill the serpent in the, in the, um, in the, the, the garden immediately, just smite the guy. Don't, don't allow him to continue to exist. Those kinds of questions are mysterious and beyond full comprehension for us on the finite side of this, this world. But we, that's where we trust God, and we, we know that God has given the world over to principalities and rulers, and that the things that we're experiencing today is a world of sin and under the weight of sin 
and of Satan's influence and of demonic influence and of evil men doing evil, prideful, lustful yeah. things. And therefore, our hope is to rest in God's redemptive purposes, that God as the ruler is going to bring justice. He's going to bring things to right. Um, he is going to redeem. And as Romans 8, 28, oftentimes is used as kind of a cliche, but it, it, it can be taken, I think, as something that's not just cliche, but truly a biblical uh, worldview is that, that God will bring about good for all those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And he, in other words, he is going to bring about good. And for some of that, that may be uh, the good that comes from heaven and glory. That may be a redemption of, of something in time here that we're, we're suffering through that we don't understand on this side of heaven. But all of us, Calvinists, Arminians, provisionists, all deal with the problem of pain and suffering um, and all have questions and mysteries with regard to how that works. Um, there are differences, however, with how each of those theologians would handle and answer those kinds of problems. And I think there's a huge deficiency if you're a theistic determinist in trying to explain pain and suffering versus those of us who do believe that, that God has given over uh, to this to this world uh, a, a sense of autonomy or freedom among its creation. And, and yeah. thus realizing that the source of that kind of pride, lust, and, and the consequences of it is not from a, a sovereign and unchangeable, you know, decree or script from God, but that it is um, authored by and scripted by uh, creation itself. And, and therefore, we should never call good evil or evil good. And what Putin is doing is evil. What what men yeah. throughout history, men and women throughout history who have uh, hurt and, and harmed others, what they have done out of pride and lust is evil and is wrong and is not of God. And it never should be called of God if it's not of God. And that's, I think, where we got to be really careful when we get into the theology of our theodicy.